Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all that you're accomplishing through your word. We receive your word this night, written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for revelation. Thank you that we'll be doers of it and we'll see you accomplish what you purpose in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We are sharing with you on the subject of our Heavenly Father. And we're talking about how we can know him, how we can have fellowship with him, the things that he wants us to do to develop the things that he purposes in our life. Ephesians 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. God has already blessed you with all the spiritual blessings. He wants them to come to pass in your life. We talked about many things so far, and we're going to pick up where we were in Matthew chapter 7, as we're continuing on to talk about the scriptures that refer to what our Heavenly Father wants to accomplish in our life. We pick up over in Matthew 7, and we begin verse 20. He says, Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone. That means there's more than just saying he's Lord. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. In other words, God is looking not just at something you say, he's looking at your fruits, because your fruits show the real you. That's evidence of what you're doing in your life, your walk. So anybody that just says such and such, that doesn't mean they're going to enter in. Only the ones who are doing the will of the Father that's in heaven. The word doeth is a word which is in a present tense in the Greek, which is important to understand. The present tense in the Greek means continuous, ongoing, repeated action, meaning the one who's continually doing the will of the Father. As Young's brings it out, who is doing, showing the ongoing action of doing the will of my Father which is in heaven. We go on in verse 22. He says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, in thy name have cast out devils, in thy name done many wonderful works? Now, who is this talking about? This is talking about Christians. And it's talking about many, not just a few. Notice what it says about them. The reason we know it's Christians is because they were prophesied in this name. Well, can anybody prophesy without having the Holy Spirit in them? No. And that means they're born again and they've received the Holy Spirit. In my name have cast out devils. Can anybody who's not a born-again Christian cast out demons? No. You have to be a born-again Christian. You have to know your authority and speak and command the demons to come out. In my name done many wonderful works. These are people that were established in their authority and were operating in power, and they did the works of God. So this is clearly Christians. The next verse says, Then will I profess unto them the many. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The word work is in the present tense. This is significant because it says what they're continually working. The word iniquity is the word anomia in the Greek, which means lawlessness. It would be best translated, who are working continually lawlessness, as Young's brings out. So, why does he say, depart from me? Obviously, because they're continually working lawlessness. Why does he say, I never knew you? Because there's been a change in these people. He goes back and he says, remember, this is the many. These are all Christians. They had done all these things. They had a relationship with him. But did they have a relationship with him any longer? Were they doing what he wanted, what he was, the will of the Father any longer? No. They were now working lawlessness, meaning they were not continuing in the things of the Lord. And he says, I never knew you. That tells you something that's very important to understand. The Father knows you by what you are doing continually, not by what you did in the past, if you're not continuing to do it presently. Otherwise, you can't have done things in the past 
and then now you quit and you're doing something else, he's going to know you by what you're doing now. He knows you by what you do continually, not what's in the past. Because again, these guys were speaking about what they did in the past, have prophesied, that's past, have cast out, past tense, have done many wonderful works. All those are past tense. But now he's talking about what they're doing continually. This shows that the one who is continually doing the will of the Father, which is the way of righteousness, walking in the way of the Word of God, that's the one who is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, as it says. But the one who does not continue, and if he would turn away and begin to work lawlessness contrary to the Word, he is not going to enter in. And then he goes on after that. He says, therefore, when there's a therefore, it's tying together what was said with what's following. He's speaking about why these people are in this state. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken them to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. When it talks about hearing, this is a present tense verb, so the person has been continually hearing the word. And when it talks about doeth, it's also present tense. So this is one who is hearing and doing the word of God which is the same as hearing and doing the will of the Father, the Word of God, like we saw previously. It says he's a wise man. He's likened to a wise man that built his house upon a rock. The rain descended, floods came, winds blew, beat upon the house. It fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Then he says, everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, he's heard them, but doeth them not. This means this guy is not doing the word anymore. You remember the guy who was working lawless. Says, You're always doing something. He's not doing the word anymore now. He's like unto a foolish man which built his house upon a sand. The rain descended, floods came, winds blew, beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Great was the fall. Anybody who turns away from walking in the ways of the Lord will have a great, continuous, downward fall. The word was actually is in an imperfect tense. The imperfect means past, but ongoing action, like the present, but it's in the past. Otherwise, they had a continuous, ongoing, downward fall. Why? Because they weren't being a doer of the word. That shows you. Again, the Father knows by you by what you're doing continually and by the fruit in your life. Not by what you did in the past if you aren't continuing to do those things today. Matthew chapter 9, of course, he wants us to be doing the will of the Father, so we'll enter in to all that he has for us. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 8, here this is when they had, the man had gotten healed. Jesus had, this is the man who came in, born of four, came down the tile of the roof, and he said, it's, uh, it's sins to be forgiven, and he said, arise and walk. And the man got healed. He said, but you may know the Son of Man has authority. This is the word exousia for power. Authority on earth to forgive sins, or remit sins. This means send away sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. He arose and departed to his house. The multitude saw it. They marveled and glorified God, which had given such authority. Exousia again, not power. Power is dunamis. It should be translated authority. Authority unto men. Well, that means that when the works of God are done, having operated in authority, it glorifies God. That would glorify God the Father. God wants you to glorify Him. And one of the ways that you glorify Him is when you use the authority that He's delegated to you and you do the works of God. He wants you to cast out the demons. He wants you to heal the sick. He wants you to destroy the works of the enemy. Use your authority to destroy the works of the enemy and you will bring glory unto him. Over in Matthew chapter 10, we pick up in verse 16. He said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men. For they will deliver you up to councils, will scourge you in their synagogues. You should be brought before the governors, kings, for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you up, take no thought 
how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father. Who's the Spirit of your Father? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will, remember, He takes the things that He hears and relays them to you. He will hear things from above and relay them to you. And He will be giving you what you are to speak. Anytime you might get persecuted anyway, the Holy Spirit will bring forth, they'll relay the things that are being told for you to speak so you don't, you just rely on listening to the Holy Spirit of what He tells you to do. It tells you that God wants us to be led by the Holy Spirit. He wants us to learn to listen to Him and follow what He wants us to do, regardless of what the situation is. We see in Matthew chapter 10, we come down to verse 32. And He says, Whosoever therefore shall confess Me, Jesus is doing the speaking, before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Whatever you do with Jesus is going to be a key, because if you'll confess Jesus before men, then He will confess you before the Father in heaven. Also, Jesus is the Word, so if you're confessing the Word before men, then you'll be confessed before the Father which is in heaven. Meaning that whatever you're doing with Jesus, whatever you're doing with the Word of God, is the determining factor of whether you're going to be confessed before the Father or not. Because the next verse says this, Whosoever shall deny me before men, if we deny him, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. You won't get an audience before the Father if we deny Jesus, or if we deny the Word and don't walk in His ways. We are to be committed to walk in His ways, and however you treat Jesus in the Word is is how the Father, of course, is going to be treating you and responding to you as well. The same truth is in putting the angels in operation. Luke chapter 12, verse 8, says similar, but speaking of angels. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Because the angels will go forth and carry out the word. But the same thing is true. He that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. What do the angels do? They're ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us, the heirs of salvation. They do His commandments. They excel in strength. They accomplish the work of the Lord. Well, that means that angels aren't automatically operating for you. You have to do what's necessary to see them be put into operation, which is making sure that you are doing what God wants you to do, confessing Jesus or confessing the word before men for him to accomplish the things that he purposes and you will be confessed before the angels. We see another scripture over in Matthew chapter 11 showing important things regard the Father, regarding the Father. Verse 25. Here's where Jesus answered and he said, I thank thee, O Father. Remember we talked about New Testament prayer we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, and we start out with thanksgiving. This is the way Jesus prayed. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Notice, revelation was revealed unto babes. Babies are ones who are, believe, they believe, they're submissive, they're, they'll believe what they're told and do it, they'll carry it out, they're obedient goes on and says, Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me and my Father. Jesus doing the speaking. Everything was delivered of him from the Father and to him. No man knoweth the Son but the Father. And this word knoweth is to become thoroughly acquainted with epigonosco, and really to have full knowledge, full, precise, correct knowledge. Thoroughly acquainted with him, to know him. No one's going to know the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth, same word, epigonosco, any man the Father save the Son. Well, how can we know him then? It goes on and says, And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. That means the Father is going to be revealed to us by the Son. And it's very interesting where we put the cursor over this word reveal here. And we find here 
how he's going to, who he'll reveal to, but there's actually another will, you see the word reveal is a infinitive, it's not the main verb here, it's an infinitive, if you see that. Will is the main word in the clause, and this particular word is in a subjunctive mood, which is important. In other words, it's not just the Son will reveal them to him like a future tense statement. It literally, essentially, is saying, to whom the Son may be willing to reveal as an infinitive him. Because this is a subjunctive mood. The subjunctive mood is a conditional statement, meaning he just doesn't reveal himself to just anybody. He only reveals the Father. Jesus reveals the Father unto those that meet the conditions. You've got to meet the conditions. Now, does that mean God, that Jesus just arbitrarily decides to reveal uh, the Father to certain people and not to others? No. He's no respecter of persons. What's the condition that's revealed here? You know, some people have taken this and they thought, see, God just only certain, selects certain ones to be saved or certain ones he's going to bring revelation to. That's not true. God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for one, he'll do for all. And, and the word is to be revealed to all of us by the Holy Spirit. It will bring the revelation to us as Jesus relays, gives those things to the Holy Spirit to relay to us. So what is this, this condition? Well, we saw it. He's revealed them unto babes. Otherwise, those people who are ready to be teachable, believe the word, act on it, do what is said, those are the ones that are going to get the revelation of it. People that won't be willing to do that, that's, you know, a baby, just whatever you tell him to do, he's going to do it. He doesn't know any better. Well, that's the same way we should be. We think we know better than God. Whatever he says, we should be doing it and carrying it out in our life. So revelation is going to come. Jesus is going to reveal the Father unto those who are like a baby, who will be believing the word, be teachable, take hold of it, do it, obey it, and carry it out. That is the condition. Otherwise, if you're unteachable, if you think you got it all together yourself or whatever all, or you don't, you're not ready to obey what God brings, you're going to think about it, you're not going to get any revelation. You might know a lot of facts, but you won't get revelation, revealed knowledge unto you, because you've got to be ready to take hold of it and do it and be obedient. And that's in line with the scriptures, other scriptures when we think about it. John chapter 8, verse 31, look what it says. Then said Jesus to the Jews that believed on him, if you continue in my word, that's someone remaining, abiding, he's obviously doing it. Then are you my disciples indeed. One who's a disciplined one, he's carrying out the word. What's going to be the result of that? And you shall know the truth. That means knowing the truth doesn't come until you become a disciple. One who's continuing in the word, doing the word. And then the truth will make you free. And this fact about doing the word or continuing in it, becoming a disciple before you know the truth, is already was spoken of down in John 3.21 when he says this, He that doeth truth cometh to the light. Not just one who hears truth. You hear it, then you're to put it in operation doing it. And you might know a lot of facts from what you hear, but you won't have revelation until you start to do things. As you start to do the word, and this is one who's doing it continuously. So this is important because we want the Father revealed to us. The Father will only be revealed to those that are going to be like babies who are going to take hold of the word and do it consistently and obey. And as they do it, they will come to the light. They will become disciples. They will know the truth, and the truth will make them free. Another thing that we see that's important to know the Father, get the revelation of him, Matthew chapter 12 and verse 28. Jesus said, If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. The kingdom of God. That is what is to be manifest. That's the rule and the reign of God. And we already saw previously, but we'll go back to it, 
in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, where he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We're to seek the kingdom. That's the rule and the reign of God. So God wants us to have this. In fact, if we look over in another scripture that we haven't looked at yet, over in Luke chapter 12, verse 31 and following, he says, Rather seek ye the kingdom of God, all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants you to operate in the kingdom. And if you're going to develop a relationship with the Father, you need to seek the kingdom and operate in the kingdom, which is operating according to the rule and the reign of God, which means you're going to be using authority that he's given unto you. You're going to be acting on the word of God with your authority to conquer the enemies in your life, to bring glory unto him and to know him. God expects us to enter into warfare, enter into the uh, using our authority to conquer enemies. And we go back to Matthew 12, 20, 28. If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. God is pleased for the kingdom to be manifest in your life. That's the good pleasure of the Father to give you the kingdom. And he goes on and says, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house? The strong man is Satan. This means one who has mighty force, Iskaros. And what is the mighty, where, what is that? That's Satan's house, and where is that? That would be operating in you from the evil spirits that have come into you from inheritance, your own sins, and victimization. And what are we to do? We're to spoil his goods, all the works of the devil that have come into us. What do we do first? First, we bind the strong man. We have authority. You use your authority to bind the strong man, Satan, who's the mighty, forceful one. And then you're going to spoil, plunder his house. And how do we plunder the house of the devil operating in us? By casting out the spirits and getting set free. Because that's what he was talking about in the previous verse. As you cast out the demons, the kingdom, the rule, and the reign of God will come into manifestation. And you're to destroy the entire network of evil spirits in your life. That glorifies the Father. See, he didn't want any evil in you. He wants you totally set free from all the bondages of the enemy. It glorifies him when you do these things. Matthew chapter 12, verse 47. See, this is why people that don't operate in authority and don't use their authority and begin to con conquer the enemies in their life, they're not going to be ever really get the revelation of the Father or please the Father or glorify Him because they're not, they're not using the authority that God's given to them. It's His good pleasure to give them the kingdom. He wants you to rule and reign. You are to rise up and conquer the enemies in your life. Now Matthew 12 tells us something else here. Verse 47, One said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. He answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? He stretched forth his hand toward his disciples. The disciples he were the ones he considered his mother and brethren. He said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. And then he goes on and says, Whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother, sister, and mother. So what's a brother, sister, and mother speaking of? It's speaking of who your family is, who you're related to. You and I have a spiritual family, and the real family of God, not just one who's born again, but as it says, the one who's doing the will of the Father. That is who you want to be, and that's who you want to relate to and fellowship as well. It's interesting what it says back here also. He says, Behold my mother and my brethren, they stand without. When it's speaking about standing without, the tense of the verb is interesting and revealing of a spiritual truth. The tense of the verb is the perfect tense. Now the perfect tense is a past tense. It could have just used a simple past tense, which is the aorist, or it could have even used a past tense showing that this was going on for a while and imperfect. But it doesn't use that. It uses the perfect tense. When you see the perfect tense, it usually has some important um, points that you need to understand, revelation. 
The perfect tense describes action that's been completed in the past and had continuing effect and is presently, that's the way it is, the present state it's in at the time of speaking. In other words, what does this say? His mother and his brother weren't following him at all. They hadn't been following him in the past, they hadn't been following him continually, and at the same time they weren't following him at all. And now they were standing without, means they were outside of we, they weren't following him at all, walking with him wherever, he, any place where he was going. And now they come and they want to speak to him. And of course, he's revealing who are the ones, the ones who continually do the will of the Father. We see a parallel scripture over in Luke chapter 8. And Luke chapter 8 says things just a little bit differently. Verse 19, Then came to him his mother and his brethren, could not come at him for the press, it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. He answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. The ones who are hearing the word of God, as he says, present tense, and doing the word of God. Again, that's exactly the same thing that we saw. The one who's hearing and doing the word of God is the one who's going to enter into the kingdom. Remember, we saw in Matthew chapter 7. So here, the, that tells you the ones who are entering the kingdom are the ones who are his family. Not just anybody that's born again. The real family of God is those who hear the word of God and do it. That's important to realize. Now, there's another place later on and he says, this is Luke 11, and he says something else. Verse 27. It came to pass, he spake these things. A certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. Thinking about his mother. Uh, he, he's he's, he's going to tell what's the straight truth. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God. And this time he didn't say about doing it. He said, keep it. That's another aspect for you to do what God wants. You're to be hearing the word and also keeping it. The word keep it is a word philosophy, which means to guard it. Now why is that important? Because when you hear the word of God, what happens? Satan comes immediately to try to take the word out of your heart. Remember what it talks about over in, in uh, Mark chapter four in the parable of the sower? says, Mark 4, 15, these are by the wayside when that word is sown, when they've heard, you hear the word, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts because they didn't take hold of it and do it. That shows you something. We must be hearers of the word and then we're going to have to do it and also be ready to guard ourselves against the enemy. As we go back over to Luke, Luke 11. So that's an important point as well. You're going to have to guard it and keep it. Because if it gets taken out of your heart, will you be doing it? No. Will you see the fruit? No. Will you be doing the will of the Father? No. That's why it is imperative that when you hear God's word, you put it in operation to be a doer of it in your life continuously. And that is so important. So from all these scriptures, we see that the real family of God is those who are doing the will of the Father, who are continually hearing and doing the Word of God as we see, and those that are not only hearing it and doing it, but they're also keeping it and guarding it so the enemy doesn't take it out. That is important. That's the real family of God, and that's who you're to be in fellowship with. That eliminates a lot of people out there to be in fellowship, isn't it? Even the ones that are born again. Just because they're born again doesn't actually mean they're a part of the family of God from the scriptures that we just saw. It's the ones who are hearing and doing and keeping, guarding the word. Many Christians don't understand that. They just ignore what Jesus said. But Jesus is speaking the truth, that's for sure. Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew chapter 13, we pick up first of all over in verse 36. This is where he had given them the parable of the tares. It's very interesting here. 
Verse 36, the, Jesus sent the multitude away and went in the house. The disciples came to him and said, Declare to us the parable of the tares of the field. And we go here, first of all, verse 37, he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, or the sons, this means, actually, of the kingdom, and the tares are the sons of the wicked. One is not there in the Greek, it's just ones who are in wick of wickedness. How did they get to the place of being wicked? Because of the things that they were doing, as you will see. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end, the completion of the world, and the reapers are the angels. This is at the end. This would be at the end of the millennial reign of Jesus, when the judgment is going to happen. Then it's interesting what it says here. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Now the question is, who are the tares? When you look at the word tares, it's interesting what this word means. Tares, looking at this in three different of the lexicons, Freiburg speaks of this as tares or that that produces poisonous seeds, bad seeds. But Liddell Scott, in his lexicon, declares this a weed that grows in the wheat. And then Thayer speaks of something which is shown here that the tares resemble wheat except the grains are black. They're like the wheat. Well, what does that tell you? What's the wheat? The wheat are the ones who are the church. And it speaks of the time of the church age. The barley was the Old Testament saints that got harvested. The wheat is the New Testament era of the ones who are going to get harvested. And it's interesting, it says that they resemble the wheat except the grains are black. Something's happened to them. What has happened to them? The black, they're poisonous, they got a weeds now. That meant sin got a hold of them. So this is speaking of Christians, as you will see. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and this is at this end, they shall gather out of his kingdom. Well, who's in his kingdom? Is the world in the kingdom? No. Who's come into the kingdom? The people that are born again. And so we got the ones that are the good seed, and then we got the tares that have been sown among the good seed that grew up with the wheat. That means some bad things came into the wheat, who are the Christians. That's what it's speaking of. And he's speaking about gathering out of his kingdom. So this would be talking about Christians. All things, or all, be better translated just all. There's no word for, that just means there's one word, all. That's why uh, Young's brings it out. All, talking about people, not all things. Things don't offend and do iniquity. All is talking about people. All that offend, and this is ones who stumble and fall. That's what this word means, meaning they're walking in sin. And them which do iniquity. And what's the word iniquity? It's the word anomia, which means lawlessness. So what do we see? That they're doing lawlessness. They gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, that are stumbling and sinning, and them which are doing continually lawlessness. So who's this talking about? It's talking about the people who are Christians that aren't walking in the way. Remember the other ones who were doing lawlessness? He said, I don't know you anymore. And so he's gathering out of his kingdom, that means out of the ones who are born again, all that have been stumbling and falling. These are ones that haven't been walking right. Someone who in, the, in that position. And those who are doing lawlessness. And again, this is present tense. We know what happens to the guy who's doing continuously lawlessness. He's going to hear, depart from me. So what's he going to do with these ones? He's going to cast them in the furnace of fire. They'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> so these guys are Christians that have stumbled and are walking in sin and now are doing lawlessness. 
They were, they're in his kingdom, but nonetheless, they're not walking in the way of the Lord. They're in trouble. And then he goes on and says, Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. And he says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Otherwise, you've got to hear what's being said. Well, who are the righteous? The righteous are the ones who are born again and doing righteousness. Remember what it says about who is the righteous? We've seen this before in 1 John chapter 3, verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that is doing righteousness is righteous. As Young's brings it out, who is doing the righteousness is righteous. So who's the one that's going to be in this position? <laughs> it's going to be the ones who are doing righteousness that are going to be considered the righteous ones. They're the ones that are going to be in this position as we see. They're going to shine in the kingdom of their father. And by the way, this is not talking about during the millennial reign. This is talking about after the millennial reign is over. The reason why, because who is the king of kings right now? Jesus. Whose kingdom is going to be operating during the millennial reign? Jesus is going to be the king of kings, Lord of lords. He's going to be ruling for a thousand years. Well, what's this about the kingdom of their father? This means the kingdom's come back, has been delivered back into the hands of the Father. Well, when does that happen? Jesus does send it back into the hands of the Father. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24. Then cometh the end. When there's the end, this is after the millennial reign of Jesus, when it's over. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. He gives it back to the Father. When he shall have put down all rule, and authority and power, which is talking about the evil spirits, and Satan at the very end who goes, remember, after he's loosed after a thousand years, being in the bottomless pit, he's allowed to go forth, and he deceives the nations, unfortunately, and that they try to come against all the saints, and then God destroys them with fire from out of heaven. So he puts down all rule, all authority, and all power. But here we see, the kingdom now is given back to the Father at the end. So what is this speaking of? It's speaking of those who are going to be with the Father in the eternal kingdom when the new heavens, the new earth comes, new heavens and earth, and when the tab we're going to tabernacle with the Father during that time. That means you and I must be righteous. That's the revelation. If you're going to know the Father and be with the Father, we must be walking in righteousness and be uh, obedient not walking in sin or walking in any lawlessness or anything like that. Otherwise, we're going to be cast out. Matthew chapter 15, verse 3. Here's where the disciples came and they were saying, first in verse 2, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? They wash not their hands when they eat bread. Uh, Jesus says, well, I'm going to get this on the real thing that we need to talk about. He said, why do you transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Otherwise, you're not walking according to the commandment of God. You're not doing the word. You are walking by your traditions, traditions of men. And he comes down to verse uh, 6, and he says, uh, that thus you have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. The traditions make the word no good. That means... The things we walk by, they better not be traditions of men or, to, or traditions that are contrary to the word or we're in trouble. He comes down, he calls them hypocrites. And he comes down to verse 9 and he says, In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. We can't be teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. We've got to be teaching the right thing. We see similar over in Mark chapter 7 where we pick up, and he says in verse 9, Fill well, you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. Unfortunately, we see this happen with people even today. They don't want to change. They want to keep their own traditions. Well, we got to be ready to change if we see something is wrong. They want to keep their traditions. And so we come along to verse 13, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which you've delivered, and many such like things do you. 
if we have traditions of men that are contrary to the word, does, you know, even if it's a half truth, if it's got some lie in it, it's not true, the word of God is going to be absolutely of none effect in our life. So what does that tell us? If you're going to know the Father and you're going to be right with him, you're going to make sure that we're walking in line with the true doctrine of Christ. And that is so important. In fact, we'll jump down to 2 John verse 9 to look at something important. Whoso transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. That's quite a statement. If we're sinning, transgressing, and abiding not in the doctrine, meaning we're not walking in line with the word, the word hath here is actually a present tense verb. What it means is we are not having God, essentially. And he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, that's why our doctrine is important and learning the truth about everything is very important so that we hear and do it. He has both the Father and the Son. Meaning if we're not abiding in the doctrine, we don't have the Father and the Son. So we got to realize what the Word is saying. All these people that think they're born again and they got the Father and the Son and everything is fine and it doesn't matter what they do, <laughs> well, they haven't looking at the, they're not looking at the Word of God. And so there's major problems. This is why this is so important. We've got to see what the Word says, because God wants to develop a, a personal relationship with us. Jesus reveals the Father unto us, and we're just come to the place to know the Father and become like Him. And it will happen through the Word in your life. We see in Matthew chapter 15, verse 10, He called the multitude and said to them, Hear and understand. Not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man. They thought it was, you know, what you eat. But that which comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. What's coming out of your mouth? It's coming out of you from what's on the inside of you in your heart. They were all not understanding this. And the disciples came and said, Knowest now the Pharisees, not thou, that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? They didn't like what they heard. <laughs> and we should hear, we should, don't get offended over the word. The word is the truth. He answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. That means anything that has been rooted, planted in your life any time that's not of the Lord, it needs to be rooted out. Your heavenly Father wants all the negative things out of your life. Anything that's not the Father planting it, which means somebody else planted it, be the devil operating somehow through the evil people, through the flesh, through sin, through the world, all kinds of things, it's to be rooted out. It got, it's supposed to be rooted up, plucked out, eliminated out of your life. That's why we got to deal with all the sin, we got to deal with all the works of the flesh, we got to cast out all the demons, get rid of them all, anything. Because what is it doing? It is affecting you adversely. It needs to be eliminated. Let them alone, because what's in you, it will affect you. It's still in you. Let them alone, he said, they be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they shall both fall in the ditch. Well, that's another reason we have to make sure we're only following after that which is in line with the word. I see too many Christians, and I get contact from them all over the world. They're telling me, what do you think about this? They've been hearing all these other teachings, and they're contrary to the word, and so forth. You know, I say, well, what are you listening to these things for? You know, was this in line with the word? No. What should we be listening for? If the blind leads the blind, they both fall in the ditch. You won't have any excuse saying, well, so-and-so told me this. That's not going to hold water. Peter said, declare unto this is parable. Jesus said, are you also yet without understanding? He expected that they would be able to grasp hold of this. Do you not understand that whatsoever enters in at the mouth goes into the belly? Talking about food. And is cast out on the draught. But those things that proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. They defile the man. That means the things that you speak forth out of you, they're coming out of the inside. And they defile the person. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness or lying, blasphemies, all these things. These are the things which defile a man, and to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. They didn't understand these things. So what is God saying? He's saying everything that's not of the Father Root it out. Get rid of it all. It's all got to go so that you can have a 
perfect, clean heart because whatever's in you is going to defile you and it's going to be coming out of your mouth. It's going to be affecting you from what's in your heart, affect your motivation, your attitudes as well. God wants us to go forth and to do the mighty works of the Lord. As we pointed out before, but here we see it again in Matthew 15, 30. Great multitudes came to him, having with them those that were lame and blind and dumb and maimed and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Insomuch of the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. The Father is glorified when we do the works. The works are to be done. He wants you to cast out demons. He wants you to heal the sick. He wants you to do the mighty works of the Lord and conquer the works of the enemy. That's why we need to get full of power, understand our authority, operate in faith, get full of faith, and conquer everything in our life and do the works. God wants you to glorify Him, and you're going to glorify the Father as you do the works. We see another thing revealed over in Matthew chapter 16. In Matthew chapter 16, we pick up, first of all, down in verse 13. This is when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? He said, Some say that you're John the Baptist, some Elias, some others Jeremiah, and one of the prophets. He said, But whom say you that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So how did he figure that one out? Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. That means revelation comes from the Father. Your heavenly Father reveals things to you. And how's it going? Remember the chain of command in the Godhead. It comes Jesus, Father to Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit simply reveals to you relays to you the things that are coming from above. So the Father is the one who is revealing spiritual truths to you. You can't get them by your own ability. You can't get them by your own uh, carnal means. You can't get them even by your just mental studying and so forth. You'll get a lot of facts, but you won't get revelation. You won't get revelation of the truths, the spiritual truths, unless it's coming from the Father. Then we go to verse 18. And I say also unto you, thou, thou art, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, there is a whole a church system which is believed and tries to say that Peter is the one who is the rock that builds, that's the one he built the church on. Not so. The word Peter is the word Petros, 4074. The word for rock is Petra. It is a different word, number 4073. Not upon Peter, but upon this rock, I will build my church. And what was he just, what was he just doing? He was revealing spiritual truths by the Heavenly Father. And so this is, the rock is the revelation of truth coming from the Father. He says, that's what's going to build the church. What's, what builds the church? The Word. The Word bringing revelation to us. So we have revelation knowledge and we act on the Word. It's the Word in us that builds us up. So we hear and we do the Word. Remember, we build, our, build the house upon the rock. In fact, when we look at this Word, and we need to look at the Word 40, uh, for the rock here, number 4073. And when you do a Word study on this, in fact, let's go back, first of all, to Matthew chapter 7. We already saw this. Verse 24, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, the hear and the doer of the word consistently, I like him to a wise man, which build his house upon the 4073 rock. Not upon Peter, but upon the rock. So, building your house upon the rock is hearing and doing the Word of God. What's going to happen when you hear and do the Word? You're going to get revelation by the Father, bringing you revelation of the spiritual truths of the Word of God. We also see 1 Corinthians chapter 10 also gives us revelation. 
verse 4, 1 Corinthians 10, 4. It says, They did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock, number 4073, that followed them, and that rock, number 4073, was Christ. So who is the rock? The rock is God. The rock was the Father, remember, and he works through Jesus Christ. And then the Holy Spirit relays all these things. Not Peter, it's Christ. So here we see this revelation, we even see it further. People of this whole group, this church system has never done a study on these things, obviously, to find out the truth. <laughs> they thought it was on Peter. They're, no, it's a big lie. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 7. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he's precious, speaking of Jesus. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Who's the cornerstone? Jesus of the house of God, right? A stone of stumbling and a rock, 4073, you notice below, of offense to them. Even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient also, wherein also they were appointed. So what's the rock of offense? It's the word that they stumble at, being disobedience. And who is that? That is Jesus. Otherwise, it's God. God's the word. Jesus is the word. So the revelation of who the church is being built upon, it's the word of God that you hear and do and what happens when you hear and do the word. The Father brings revelation to you. He'll reveal the truths unto you. So the rock is the revelation from the word that you hear and do that the Father is going to bring revelation to you of the spiritual truths of God. That is the truth. Let's go back over to Matthew 16. Because this, the church is going to be built on this, see? And what's going to be the effect? And this is what God wants. The Father wants the church to be built and become strong. Matthew 16, 17, as we go back to, uh, and we go to verse 18 now, where he said, Upon this rock, talking about the word of God that you hear and do that is revealed to you by the Father, revelation knowledge of the word, I will build my church. So he's going to build the church. I mean, it's going to become strong. And the church is who? You and me. We're going to be built through the Word of God that's in you. You're no stronger than the level of the Word that's in you. And then he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, what's all this talk about? Gates protect something. I have a gate so somebody can't get in, you know. So a gate is like something that's blocking. It, it can be a means of entrance to something, but also it can be something around your house. i got a gate so nobody can get here. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We look at this word, prevail against. It is a word, katiskuo. This particular word refers to having superior strength or be able to prevail against. Iskuo means mighty force. So it's talking really about having mighty force against something. Mighty force. The word is from kata and iskuo when it's combined together. Kata means against, iskuo means mighty force. So this is talking about that the gates of hell will not have mighty force against the church. And why would they not, why would they want to have mighty force against the church if they could? To stop the church from coming and attacking them and destroying all the works of the devil. So the church is going to destroy the works of the enemy. The church has mighty force against all the places where the devil has his gates, and we can destroy them all and eliminate them. And why this is so, because the next verse, look what it says, and, notice these are all tied together, and, it's speaking together about a subject, and, now he's telling you, what do you need the mighty force for? We're going to destroy the works of the devil. The gates of hell are not going to have mighty force against the church. And what's the church supposed to do? Attack all the works of the enemy and destroy them. And that's what this is talking about. I will give unto thee the keys. Remember, and 
begins, so it means it ties together with what was just previously said about how the gates of hell, they don't have mighty force against the church whatsoever. I will give unto thee, talking about the church, the keys of the kingdom. Remember, you have a gate. The keys are going to open up that gate. Their gate's not going to be able to, to keep us all out of it. The keys or the means of access of the kingdom of, it says, heaven, well, it's actually plural in the Greek. Young's brings this out. So he's saying, I give unto you the keys, the means of access to the rule and the reign of the heavens. Remember, God wants you and I to operate in the kingdom. It's a good pleasure for him to give you the kingdom. He says, seek the kingdom. You cast out the devils out of people, it brings the kingdom to them. How about in the heavenlies where all these principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness are? We're supposed to bring the kingdom to that and cast them out of the heavenlies and clean house as well. That's what the church is supposed to have been doing. I give unto thee the keys of the rule and the reign of the heavens. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heavens. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven, it says. But it's heaven, it's plural in all three cases. We'll show you this. This is Young's. Young's brings it out. Heavens. Heavens and heavens. And let's show you in the Greek for a moment so you'll understand this. You can see this. Here's the first word for heaven, plural. Here's the second word for heaven, plural. And here's the third word for heaven, also plural. So why did they translate it singular? They weren't faithful to translate things correctly. This is why we always have Young's up here. There's very few translations that have translated this heavens, unfortunately. Makes all the difference in the world. I will give unto thee the keys of the rule and the reign of the heavens. Who's he speak, speaking to? The church that has the mighty force that, that can prevail against the gates of hell and they can't stop them. So, he's given unto the church the keys of the rule and the reign of the heavens. And this is how you're going to operate it. Whatsoever you, that's you and me, the church, might bind, not shall bind, but it's actually a subjunctive mood because it's a conditional statement. It's not automatic. You've got to do it to see it happen. A conditional statement means you've got to carry it out. Whatsoever you might bind on earth. Where are you and I? We're on earth might bind on earth, which means I can operate on this thing from earth. I don't have to be up in the heavens. I can operate it right here on earth. They can affect the heavens, the rule and the reign of the heavens. Whatsoever you might bind on earth shall be. This is the main verb here. Future tense, shall be. Then it says bound in the heavens. Remember, it's plural. Not a good translation. Because bound is a participle. A participle would be translated having been bound. This is why Young's translates it this way correctly. Having been bound. And the main verb in, this, in the clause is shall be. So what it's saying is whatsoever... By the way, when we, you look at this shall be bound, you think of shall be kind of like helper verbs in English, and bound would be the main verb, but it's not. It literally says, whatsoever you might bind on earth shall be, having been bound in the heavens. Otherwise, it's a strong statement, shall be. That means whenever you bind, it's going to take effect in the heavens. And what are you doing? You're bringing the rule and the reign of God into the heavens. God's given us the keys to the rule and the reign of the heavens, which means we are to take dominion and bind all these principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places and tie them up. It shall be having been bound in the heavens. And who's doing the binding in the heavens? The angels do. The angels are going to go forth and accomplish this. And it will have a continuing effect unless people give place to things through sin. 
because the reason is because this happens to be this word about about bound happens to be a perfect tense perfect tense means past action with present effects at the time of speaking where you bind it's working and it's a present effect at the time of speaking shall be having been bound in the heavens so why do we bind something to tie it up bind means I'm going to tie it up if I bind something I stop it if someone comes and binds me I, I can't do anything I'm all I'm stopped what about loose whatsoever thou shalt loose or same thing might loose subjunctive mood the reason why it's subjunctive of course is because it's conditional you got to carry it out it's not automatic if you don't do it it's not going to get done you and I have to do this because remember he's speaking to the church whatsoever you might loose now what's loose all about untie that means we can bind the spirits up in the heavens to tie them up and stop their works how about where they're already have a place a city a country a nation uh, whatever bound and they're already controlling well you can loose untie their hold over a place over a nation over wherever it might be this is why we bind to tie them up and we loose to untie their hold whatsoever you might loose on earth from your position shall be again this is the future tense main and the indicative word about mood by the way in the Greek you some 15,000 times it is a mood declaring a factual statement that happens it's a fact it shall be having been loosed again this is the same thing a participle the perfect participle in the heavens in other words what is this passage telling us it's telling us now that the Heavenly Father brings revelation knowledge to the church for those who are hearing and doing the Word of God and those who are hearing and doing the Word of God they're going to get this revelation and they're going to know things and what else they to do this is what's going to build the church to make the church mighty and strong and what's going to happen they are going to have mighty force against the devils whatever the devil has done doesn't matter that's why you bind the spirits in the person you spoil his house casting all the devils out or you bind the spirits up in the heavenlies and then what do you do that's just a prerequisite you're gonna cast them down and throw them down and root them out and if they're up there and they've had a place bound you're gonna loose and untie their hold and then you're gonna cast them down and throw them down and root them out of the heavenlies this is what we do this is all talking about the church doing the things that the father wants us to do so verse 18 and verse 19 are about conquering, conquering the devil and that's what the church is supposed to do you and I are expected to do these things he wants us to do it so you and I we bind and we loose from earth the effects in the heavens it will be who carries it out the angels do why does it happen because you met the conditions of binding and or loosing against the enemies to tie them up or untie their hold and you cast them down and destroy their works of course the binding is a prerequisite because what else do we need to do you got to look at the other verses that go along with this Jeremiah 1 down in verse 10 see I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms so we're over the nations we're over the kingdoms all these spirits operating up over them is what it's talking about and what can we do we can root out we can pull down we can destroy we can throw down that's destruction of all the works of the enemy over the nations over the kingdoms as well as to build and to plant as we speak things into being therefore you and I have been given a position of authority and we're to operate see the father's good pleasure is for you to operate in the kingdom if you're gonna to get to know the father and you're gonna please the father and you're gonna become like the father you're gonna operate in the kingdom you've been brought into the kingdom to rule and reign under Jesus Christ as you are doing what the word says and the father is going to be operating by the word of God 
bringing forth revelation to you, building you up, strengthening you, and bringing you to the place when you know your weapons of warfare, you're going to smite the enemies, you're going to bind, you're going to loose, you're going to cast down, you're going to cast out, you're going to throw down, you're going to root out, you're going to pull down. All these sp spirits, effects, you're going to eliminate them. You have a dominion and authority over all the works of the enemy. We certainly covered a lot of things that are important about the kingdom tonight. And when you look at all these things, this is how, what the Father expects. And if you and I are going to know the Father, we need to come in line with it. So what have we seen? We've seen quite a few statements that are very important. Your fruit shows whether you're going to be right with the Father and enter into the kingdom or not. Evidence by you're doing the will of God continually, otherwise you won't enter into the kingdom of the heavens. If you did it in the past, but you're not doing it anymore, you're going to be cast aside. You're going to be saying, depart from me. Continually doing the will of the Father. You're going to use your authority and you're going to do the works of God. The Bible says, the works that I do, you're going to do also. You see, we're going to do the same thing. Jesus did everything that the Father told him to do. You and I do the same thing that Jesus does, which does what? Makes us, it's going to make us just like Jesus and make us just like the Father because you're to become like him. Remember, we saw that scripture about how you shall be perfect even as your father is perfect. We're to become like him, and it will happen. And Jesus, remember, we saw that scripture, he's going to reveal the father unto those who meet the conditions, which means you've got to be like a baby, remember. You're going to believe the word, you're going to take hold of it, you're going to do it, you're going to obey, you're going to do exactly what you're told. That's what a baby does. He just responds to what he's told to do. That is what God is looking for. We're going to glorify him. Same time, we understand that what we do with Jesus is going to determine whether we're going to have an audience with the Father. Because remember, if you confess Jesus, then he's going to be confessed before the Father. If not, you won't. So what you do with the Word is very important. Also, it affects you with the angels. You can be denied before the Father, you can be denied before the angels. Or you can be confessed before the Father or confessed before the angels. Same time, as we saw, we've got to be teachable as a baby. We also were to cast out the demons. The kingdom of God is to come unto you and be manifest because it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's a major thing that we see. He wants you to rule and reign. Anybody that does not understand that they're in the kingdom and not understand their authority and know the weapons of warfare and engage in warfare will never come to the place of pleasing the Father. He is good pleasures to give you. He wants you engaging in warfare. You can't sit on the sidelines. You'll never become like the Father unless you, gain, you enter into the warfare and conquer the enemies. Another major thing we saw, those who are hearing and doing the Word consistently, doing the will of the Father, and not only are doing it, but they're keeping it, keeping the Word, are the real family of God. That destroys most everybody's teaching out there. You go ask almost anybody out there on the street and say, are you born again? Oh yeah. Are you part of the family of God? Oh yeah. And then you throw out these scriptures say, well, are you hearing and doing the word and doing the will of the Father and guarding and keeping the word in your heart all the time? Well, uh, you're not a part of the family from God's standpoint. Otherwise, we got a bunch of traditions, false teachings out there, don't we? And who you want to be in fellowship with? We want to be in fellowship with people that are hearing and doing and keeping the word, don't we? That's who we're going to walk with. And then we saw the other place in the parable there of the tares. Those are ones who resemble the wheat. They're like them. Oh, well, there's a lot of Christians that resemble the wheat. But they got some bad stuff in them. <laughs> they got black. They got poisonous seeds. They got weeds. We're not supposed to have any in us. Because what does that do? What happens? That's evidence the guy's been sinning and stumbling. And he's not doing the word. He's doing lawlessness now. What happens to him? He's cast in the furnace of fire. Only the righteous will shine in the kingdom of their Father. That shows another thing. Remember what it says, Matthew 6, 33. You seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Those are two major things for you to develop a personal, intimate fellowship and to become like the Father. 
If you don't get the understanding of the kingdom and operate in the kingdom, and you don't become righteous by doing the word of righteousness, you're not going to be with them. Because only the righteous are going to enter in to be within the kingdom of the Father. We saw that. That is critical. Which means, of course, we, got, we can't be following the traditions of men. We can't be transgressing the commandments of, of Jesus Christ. We can't be following commandments of men, traditions of men, making the word of God of none effect. No. We're not going to have, be righteous whatsoever. Remember, the blind follows the blind. They both fall in the ditch. And we can't also have all these things in us that have been planted by other things outside of the Father. Anything that's not the Heavenly Father didn't plan in you, it's got to go. It has to go. You've got to get it out. Don't think that it's going to be okay. No, it shall be rooted out. He wants everything rooted out of you that is not of the Lord. And then we also saw the spiritual truths being revealed to you by the Father. What's the purpose? So that you will know the Word and it will build you up. At the same time, remember, this is why you've got to be a hearer and a doer and guard the Word because the devil's after the Word. He comes for the Word to try to take it out. Or if you're doing the Word, he'll try to, to get you to fall back in the time of temptation. Or even if you're doing the word and you're doing, things seem like they're progressing, then he tries to come in with the cares of this world, lusts of other things, deceitfulness of riches, and choke the word so you and it become unfruitful. It all comes down to the word in your life. That's why you hear me say all the time, being a hearer and a doer of the word and keeping the word in you. It is mandatory. And what's evident of it? Fruit. Remember you get fruit, but then how do you come to the more fruit stage? You've got to get all the uncleanness out. You've got to get cleansed. That's all the things rooted out from the Heavenly Father that the Heavenly Father didn't plant. Root out everything. And then you come to the abiding place. You're doing the Word consistently. You're a real disciple. That's the guy who is bringing forth more fruit, much fruit, that is much fruit at that point. And he's the one that's the real disciple. And that's the ones who get the revelation. The ones who are the true disciples of the Lord. And so, as we then understand that the church is going to be built by that. How do we get the mighty force? Because of the Word in us. The Word produces mighty force in you. Remember, when we put on the armor of God, we are empowered with the power of God, and then we re release it out with mighty force because of the Word in you. It produces power, and you put it in operation. And as you put the mighty power of God in operation, the mighty force, you're going to conquer everything. And that's why we saw casting out the devils. Doesn't, the strong man is considered Iskuo. He's considered a mighty man. But you gotta, when you have the mighty force of the Lord in you and authority, you can cast out everything. You can also clean house on the heavenlies. See, this is what God wants. This is what the church is supposed to be doing instead of being what they've been. But this is what the mighty church is going to become in the end times. The glorious church will rise up in mighty power, mighty force, operating in the kingdom, and also operating in righteousness. We saw two major things that have to be established in you. You get the kingdom revelation, and you walk in the kingdom and operate in it, and you operate in righteousness and walk in righteousness all the days of your life. You are going to be with the Father. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that brings revelation of what it means to develop a relationship with you and to know, to know you. I understand everything that is not of the Father that's been planted in me has to be rooted out. I will destroy it all in my life. And I also will seek the kingdom and operate in the authority the rule and reign of God, and I will release my authority and conquer the enemies. I also will walk in line with righteousness. Make sure I'm walking in line with the true word of God, not the doctrines of men, traditions of men, commandments of men that make the word of none effect. I will make sure that I'm walking in line with the word exactly and I thank you for bringing revelation, building me up as a part of the church, having mighty force to conquer the enemies 
and see you accomplish everything that you purpose. I will operate in the kingdom and I will walk in righteousness. And I know as I'm righteous, I will be with the Father in the eternal kingdom. Thank you for the work being done in my life as I am here and a doer of this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I trust this has helped you and driven home these points to you, which are extremely important. And also, these things that we talk, talked about destroy almost all the teaching out there that's been going forth in the body of Christ, <laughs> thinking that I, you know, I, I'm, everything's fine for me just because I'm born again. And, you know, no, if you're walking in lawlessness, you're done. You're walking in unrighteousness, you're done. You know, if you're not doing the things he says, and you're stumbling and, and uh, uh, in the, even in the kingdom doing a lawlessness, you're going to be cast out. Father, we thank you for bringing revelation of truth. We thank you. We will operate in the kingdom and walk in righteousness, and we will know the Father and become like the Father. Thank you for the great work you're doing in each one of our lives, because we are hearers and doers of this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We're going to continue on this. We're going to be.